And turning now to Iran, it's been nearly three months since a young woman, Masha Amini, died in the hospital three days after being taken into custody of Iran's morality police. Iranian protesters continue to risk everything, taking to the streets, demanding change and freedom from the Islamic Republic. But with the Iranian government often limiting Internet access, another battle is being waged online. The Iranian diaspora is helping to spread the word of protesters. MSNBC anchor Yasmin Vesugian spoke with social activists in the U.S. leading these efforts. They are inspiring us and we're inspiring them. And it's just not stopping. Natarsin, Natarsin, ma bohame, boham hastim means don't be afraid, don't be afraid. We are all together now. I will not rest until you are free. We will not rest until you are free. Joining us now is Iranian journalist and activist Masi Alina Jad. Masi, it's good to see you. I thank you for being with us this morning. Well, we're seeing the strength of these women talking about the solidarity and the need to keep these voices alive. You've been, of course, key in doing that. How vital is it? It's very important to know that Iranian regime will survive if they see that the rest of the world kind of forget about what's going on in Iran. Right now that I'm talking to you, the family members of those who got killed, they're using social media and calling for action, for like uh, calling other people uh, to go on their uh, on, uh, hunger strike, uh, national strike, and they go on people to take to the streets. And these are the family members that their young beloved one, their daughters and their sons got killed in Iran protests, but they want to be heard. They want the democratic countries to, to hear them. And the only way for them is to take to the streets, risk their lives, as you heard the young uh, woman was saying. They're calling each other and saying, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. We are together. And we want the world to be with us as well. You know, we just saw the Iranian uh, team in the, in the World Cup. Uh, they're back home after they didn't sing uh, during the anthem of the first uh, match. Uh, Many observers saw that as a show of solidarity uh, with the women and the protesters in Iran. Uh, do they face any different reality going back to Iran now? Look, I have to say that it was an act of uh, showing their solidarity, but it was too little, too late, because these football players were the one actually went uh, in a meeting with Ibrahim Raisi, the butcher of uh, Tehran. They shook hand with him. So many people believe that because they were under pressure, no? But they can choose because a lot of young generations in Iran, teenagers, they're getting killed, but they're not bowing to the murderers. So they could uh, show their more solidarity right now that Ali Karimi, one of the well-known football player, or Vurya Ghafuri lives in Iran, best football player, but he choose to stand in the right side of the history to support Iranian people, to speak up against the killings, massacre. These football players, when they were playing with Wales, the same day teenagers were getting killed in the cities of Kurdistan. Why is it that... And it's, uh, I, I see history and I read... And I, why is it that it is so difficult for people to be able to speak in a regime... And you can yeah. see throughout history similarities to it. I mean, the fact that we're talking about a regime where there's a morality police tells you everything you need to know. But, you know, yeah. why is it so difficult for people to have and effectuate change? I mean, to be honest, Iran, a lot of people believe that uh, is ready, is ready to have a secular democratic country. What is the problem here? Sometimes the regime knows how, I mean, they, 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 they know the best like Putin, like uh, Maduro, like China, how to use different tools to oppress people and silence them. One of them is a sport. Hmm. The other one is cinema. Like when people are getting killed, people were like being told by morality police in the street, cover yourself, cover yourself. But at the same time, in the world, people are like, oh no, you have amazing actress. Music and, and culture. Music. So, and, and, and people were like, exactly. Or we were saying that, hey, you're talking to a woman. I'm not allowed to go to a stadium. But you say that your football team, oh, they're amazing. I mean, it's unbelievable. This is a gender apartheid regime. So the football team is not a national team. And the Iranian regime actually took it away from us. We don't have a national team. This is a team which represents gender apartheid, represents the dictatorship. And is it difficult to understand? 
The World Cup expelled Putin. You tell me, what is different between Putin and Khamenei? Khamenei is helping Putin by sending drones to kin kill innocent Ukrainians. And you see that Khamenei, Putin, Maduro, China, all of the dictators are united, but the democratic countries, they're, they're, they're not as united as the dictators. I mean, actually, it was a very um, courageous statement, I mean, very beautiful, that finally President Biden and President Macron got united against the Islamic Republic. But we need concrete actions. Marcel and Gijan, it's always a pleasure to see you. I thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you really so much for hosting voice. me. Thank, thank you. you.